Be a gentleman. Be a gentleman. That's a gentleman, that's a, not a gentleman. <laughs> What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be taking you guys to practice with me, but first make sure you hit that red subscribe button and if you're feeling frisky, hit that little gray bell button so you're notified the next time I post a video and let's get on to the bowling alley. So I'm getting ready to go practice and one of you guys asked me when's a good time to use surface and honestly it's kind of funny because I'm not the like poster girl for surface by any means. I typically like to leave all my bowling balls shiny but this year we are going to try to leave two or three bowling balls with just a little bit of surface on them and the main reason being we want to have a different shape in the bag. This year we're really going to emphasize having you know, shapes be the telltale of the ball chases that we're gonna be making. So Chris is currently throwing a little bit of surface on my Wolverine strike. And surface for me generally is for when I need a bowling ball to pick up just a little bit sooner, um, kind of just grab the lane a little bit or when I really need a ball to slow down. Um, but like I said, I'm really not a surface girl. It is something that I am trying to learn and get used to. It does provide a little bit of a more aggressive shape almost. And since I never really have a problem making a ball hook, it's just not something that we feel we need a whole lot of in my bag. But nonetheless, it'll be there for when we need it. So just kind of looking over. Chris uses a combination of water and our ballon pads. What are you using right now, by the way? Uh, I almost always wet sand it. Uh, I mean, unless you're on the lane, you know. You. There's no reason to really. As he's like finishing up already. Sanding. But what did you put on it? What Aberlon? This is a thousand. So for you, normally we never go really anything under that. Even for like urethanes, we'll maybe hit them with like. Maybe a very used five, yeah, if anything. Uh, yeah, it was like a brand new one. And just, this is kind of a used one. So, so this like, is the vice one. So this is a little grittier. A lot grittier. So can... Yeah. I mean, I'm still, I mean, I know the gist, but like, what do the numbers on Aberlon pads mean? Like the smaller the number? So the, the like lower the number numerically. So like a 500 has more grit than a thousand. It's really so just like- 500 makes it- Open up the pores. Yeah, just dull, like duller looking, more yeah. sanded, bigger lines, more grooves, more teeth yeah. pretty much to grab the lane. So lower the number, more teeth, the faster it grabs the lane. And the higher the number, obviously the opposite. So I think we put what, like 4K on my spare ball? It's your spare ball like has 10K. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. just kidding. Yeah, your uh, spare ball has 10K <laughs> plus it has slip agent, plus it has uh, the regular polish and we have- yeah, Let me actually show you guys. We do have our little kit that we will be traveling with. So- Just different mixtures. Yeah, and play around with mixing them. So, like, her Patreon will know. So if you want to yeah. know special combos that she uses, we'll tell you on Patreon. But I am giving you guys so many tricks that I don't share with anybody else on my Patreon. So if you want the inside scoop, go subscribe. Okay, back to Chris. Yeah, so don't just use, you know, polish on a ball. Use other things with the polish. I mean, there's polish, there's... There's like the active gloss. There's, there's scuff. There's step one. There's step two. There's there's like up to four ball cleaner. Steps. There's all all kinds of stuff. We have actual combinations that we use for certain things. So if we say we polish a ball, there might be more than just polish on it. But if you guys have any questions about that, we're more than happy to answer them. Make sure you leave them down in the comments below. But now it's really time to get off to practice. I'll see you at the lanes. Baby, Baby rocket abuse. Guys, Chris is on this like raccoon fetish. I don't even know like what do it is. Fetish not, is a th crazy fetish is a word. crazy word. That's okay, that wild. that is not definitely don't have a raccoon <laughs> fetish, everybody. So. Not in not in a wow. sexual manner. Wow, I, I didn't just don't even know. That's We're just gonna erase crazy. this whole conversation. Okay, but like he really loves raccoons right now. Like where you send each other a million raccoon videos back and forth. I mean I don't even, fetish is a strong word, I'm sorry. Why are sorry. you still saying I'm, it? Okay, I'm done. That's We're insane. just not talking about it anymore. We're I bad. like raccoons. <laughs> yeah. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> Buddy. 
he does. That is such a sick freaking. <laughs> that one was much better off my hand, too. I, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> like, this is so cool. It, it'll just track you. I could be over here. And it's just going to track you. Thank you. It's just recording, and I'm going to be over here. Throw a strike. Okay, that I can right. do. It's a little bit of an open pocket. Push. Boom. Yay. Boom. need to emphasize the hit and the smack because we're posting pretty well. That was so good off my hand though. Good. When we throw it like that, we're allowed to make moves. One thing for the viewers, Chris and I 99.9999999 percent of the time we will never make a ball change off of a bad shot it's just one of those things where if you didn't throw it remotely close to where we were trying how will we ever actually know if it was right or wrong if i throw it bad we are completely blunt about it chris is not shy about telling me i just didn't throw it good and then if you over adjust and then throw it good, you might be in the complete wrong zone because you're trying to compensate for a bad shot. So just something to think about. If you throw it poorly, try it again before just making a million ball choices. Oh, that was good. That was really good off my hand. I like that. Now you see that one, I feel like I peered it. So based off of that shot, it's very easy for Chris to like go in the bag and say, throw this in the exact same spot and you're gonna hit the one two, or the one three, sorry. Might just be a little bit too far left now, but that's okay. Well, that's also where you're not used to a surface because now, yeah. This ball might be burning up a little bit. Yep. I've been really good on those two eights. That's good going into season because two eights can be tricky. just did not feel very good at all. No? No. Okay. Try again. 
I mean, I'm sure it looked okay, but it just did not feel. You can talk to this one too. This one's recording from over here now. So it's just getting face. It's a staring at you. Yeah. So I shouldn't just be like. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> What's that? She looks familiar. Yes. Stephanie? Zavala? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, what do we work on? You tell me. Oh, we're not throwing that one tonight. We put that away. We throw that one. And we probably bring an amethyst. Said that. What'd you say? I did not say nothing. It's okay. I wonder if that's going to make you look left-handed. 
I wonder if it records backwards on a front camera. Does it? I don't know. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed walking through a day of practice with me. Real quickly, in my last video, somebody asked me if I hold on to the bowling balls that I win with, and the answer is yes. So I'm just gonna walk you through my little showcase that I have here. We'll start with like the cool stuff. It's not a bowling ball, but on top, on my trip to Japan in 22, I went with Sean and DMAC. I got that really cool like wine box thing and a couple commander's coins, so that's just something that I think is pretty special. And then moving down, we have my intensity with the Greater Cleveland Open. That was my very first win, followed by intensity number two and the BVL, that is a 15 pound bowling ball on top of there, it's extremely heavy. And my first PWBA 300 ring. So that's something that has a special place in my heart and the watch that Ryan, Simonelli and I won at the Lucy last year. Now. Across the way, we have, this was the third one. This was in Reno, that's the RSTX2, and it has a crack, which is really sad and unfortunate, but it will forever be displayed. Then we have first major win, title number four, that is the Wolverine Dark Moss, and my really heavy, super made of glass, awesome rookie of the year trophy. And title number five is the Burner Pearl. Something about me, we retire the bowling balls as soon as we win. So it doesn't matter if it's only 25 games like those two intensities or 2,500 games like the Burner Pearl. If I win with it, it's done. We drill a new one. And lastly, this one's very protected by aliens, but this is the major trophy. So I do like to showcase everything. So Chris is very lenient. He lets me put up my bowling balls and my trophies in our living room, so I'm super appreciative of that. But yeah, let me know what you guys want to see next, and I'll see you next time.